Hello everyone, Sander Ek here. So in today's video, we're going to be go over every single Inazuma characters we know so far, as well as their weapon type, their vision type, and some interesting lores about all of them. Before we get started, just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who came out to the live stream yesterday. It was a huge turnout. The average view was above 25, which was beyond my imagination. I was expecting 5 people to show up. However, with that said, so one thing to note is that as the channel grows bigger, it might be harder for me to catch everyone's comments at all times. So if you have a specific question for me, uh, you can either attend my live stream, which should be every Friday at 8 p.m. to depending on how long it needs to run Eastern time. And uh, I will try to do this for every single Friday before school starts in September. And also, if you cannot attend the live stream because the time zone doesn't work out for you, you can pin me in my Discord, and that in that way I can also answer your specific questions. With out of the way, let's get into the actual content. So currently, out of these three Harbingers who might show up in Inazuma, there will be six native Inazuma characters that has not been considered playable yet. Apart from, of course, Ayaka and Yoimiya and Kazuha. Kazuha is being rated up right now. Ayaka and Yoimiya are both coming in patch 2.0. Out of these 6 leftover characters, there will be 3 5 stars and 3 4 stars. So I'll be going over all of them as well as their weapon and vision type and some interesting lores about all of them. However, one thing to note is that some of their weapon and vision type are still subject to change, so I will be making sure to tell you when some, uh, sometimes their weapon and vision type are still a little funky. So I'll make sure to tell you that, but other than that, most of them should have been stabilized at this point. So first, let's start with the Riding Shogun slash Bell slash the Electro Archon herself. Contradictory to what is showing in the trailer, she is going to be a 5 star Electro Power Arm user, not a Katana user. However, there is a rumor going around, again this is a rumor, no confirmation yet, that she is going to have two stances like Child. So basically in her normal stance, which is equivalent to Child's bow stance, she is going to be using Electro Power Arm as her main weapon, and she is going to be a support focuses on utilizing energy recharge to buff her teammates and also her entire kit revolves around energy recharge at that point. However, once her energy is full, she will automatically enter what is called the inner stance or the archon stance. And in that stance, she will become an Electro Katana user who will be a sub DPS or even DPS. And her focus will be dealing pure Electro damage. And after using her Q, she will go back to her normal stance. So that is the rumor so far. We don't know if that is true, of course. So that is all the kit wise about her. And also lore wise, it looks like she is going to be playing as one of the main villains for Inazuma. And she, there is a chance she will become a weekly boss from the trailer we have seen. It looks like there will have to be a fight between her and the Traveler in the end. So Inazuma's situation is going to be quite interesting with bow against us as well as the harbingers and we kind of had to work with the harbingers in the first half to kind of take bow down but at the same time we don't want the harbingers to take bow's gnosis so stuff is going to be a little bit interesting when inazuma rolls around in terms of uh, lore wise the second one we have is of course e miko or gunji e depending on how you learn her name so she is going to be a five star electro callus user so one thing to note, apart from her actual name, E. Miko, which is the official translation used in both Chinese and Japanese, uh, in the English community, she is more popularly known as Guji E or E. Gunji. Both cases are correct. Gunji in this case is not part of her name, it's a title meaning priestess. So it's more of her title, so she is priest, uh, Priestress E. Position-wise, she is the head priestess of the Grand Narukami Shrine, which is a shrine uh, Ayaka is controlling at the moment because the Kamisato household is one of the three offices of Inazuma. And the duty of the Kamisato household is in charge of shrines, ceremonies, and festivals. So E. Miko is directly working under Ayaka even though lore-wise she is much more older and supposedly more important than Ayaka lore, um, in the status-wise. However, she is currently directly working under Ayaka. 
So a bit more info about her can also be digged out out of her conversation with Zhang Li's voice character, voice actor back in Patch 1.5's live stream. Of course, in the Chinese part, there was nothing showing the English part. In the Chinese part, two important things to note: she called herself an old friend of Morax, so it possibly means their friendship dates as back as the Archon War. There is a possibility of that. However, we don't know exactly how old she is at the moment. And the other thing to note is that she is kind of the status of an Adaptus of Inazuma. However, the status of an Adaptus does not really exist. However, she is of someone of the similar status. So basically, um, sage or um, god or like a deity of sorts, but not at the level of an Archon. The third 5 star we'll talk about is Kokomi who is going to be a 5-star Hydro Catalyst user. So one quick thing to note regarding her star level. Back when she, back when her initial model was leaked in patch 1.1, back when she was codenamed Mimi, she was first read to be a 4-star Hydro Catalyst user. So her star level was recently changed to 5-star. So there is still the chance that she is actually a 4-star Hydro Catalyst user, however, until further confirmation, it is safe to assume that she is going to be a 5-star instead. So one quick thing to note, in the Chinese translation, her last name is the Coral Palace, that's literally the real name of her last name's translation, which is the same name used for the base of the Rebellion. So that leaves us with two possibilities. So the first one is confirming that she is native to the Watsutsumi Island. Basically, if that is correct, then we are assuming that she is the daughter of the Dragon King, who is the ruler of the Coral Palace. And as a native, she is kind of rising up against the bow to protect her home. So that is one assumption. Or a broader assumption is that to assume that she is local to Watsutsumi Island because the Coral Palace is also located in the middle of the island. However, her last name is currently unknown in English, so I won't go too much into these speculations. So lore-wise, she is the strategist of the Rebellion forces. So she is the one kind of working under the curtains while Goro is the one fighting in the front line. Now of course that does not to say she does not join battles. For example in the trailer we can see that she was actually hiding there alongside with her troops trying to surround Bao's army from both sides with Goro to try to eliminate them. So that was one of her strategist moves working in the middle of the conflict. And hopefully we'll get to see more of her during the quest. Now, of course, with Watatsumi Island not released in patch 2.0, hopefully we'll see her as early as patch 2.2. Now, let's go move on to the 4-star characters. So, having already talked about Kokomi, the first one I'll mention is Goro. Goro is going to be a 4-star Geo Archer. So, he was first thought to be a 5-star ever since he was first leaked. However, a week after that, people started confirming that he is a 4-star, mostly due to the fact that his design is not giving off a 5-star vibes. However, at this point, we are about 70-80% certain that he is going to be a 4-star instead of a 5-star. So, another thing regarding him lore-wise, his ears and tails are real, unlike Kachin's fake cat ears. So he's probably similar to Diona's case, someone having a mix of animal and human bloodlines mixed together. Lore-wise, he is the general or one of the generals of the rebellion forces. And that is to confirm he is at least one of the leaders, if not the leader of the rebellion force. He normally goes head-on in a battle and he is that is probably expecting him to be a DPS. Also, I mean, if they already make Jean Li a sub-DPS, it is possible that he is also not a DPS at all. One last thing to note, he might have what is originally Albedo's kit. Here is the thing, Albedo, before he was first beta tested, was worked on as a Geo Archer for quite a while. Also, Albedo was at first a 5-star Geo Archer, and then sometime very 
sometime very close to the beta testing date, they decided to completely swap out his kit for a Geo single hand sword user kit. So here what they might be doing is they might take Albedo's old kit where Albedo was an archer and recycle it onto Goro. So one interesting thing when you get Goro, his kit might be what originally Albedo's kit looked like. Finally, let's move on to the second 4 star, who is going to be Kujo Sarah, or there is another translation which I don't think anyone uses, is Kujo Sharo. So she is the adopted daughter of the Kujo family. Kujo, like the Kamisados, is another of the three houses of Inazuma. However, instead of in charge of ceremonies, they are in charge of the military slash police slash homeland security slash safety duties. So Sarah herself is a great general and a skilled combatant herself. She is going to be a force. She is going to be an electro archer, as we saw her shooting an electro charged arrow during the cutscene, and it is pretty much confirmed that she is a four star at this point, which is a pity. However, it might be a surprise in disguise because, like Ningguang, she might turn out to be a really overpower 4 star and then given the status of 4 star it's easy to get her constellations then um, personally i'm very interested to see what c6 sarah can do in terms of damage now lore wise she again is the adopted daughter of the kujo family and currently she is the right hand man for bao who is and she is also given the task to carry out the vision hunt decree which is why she ended up facing the rebellions head on and also another thing regarding her Ayaka's and also thing regarding Ayaka's view on her. Ayaka does not really like her personality, however Ayaka does respect the fact that she has absolute loyalty for Bao. Finally, let's move on to the last 4 star we have to talk about, as well as the last Inazuma character. Toma, who is going to be a 4 star pyro poem user. He is a servant to the Kamisato household and he was taken as a servant since a childhood age and he almost kind of served as the personal servant for Kamisato Ayaka. So they are both in the relationship of a master serv of a master servant but they're also in the sort of a relationship of childhood friend. However, if you listen to Ayaka's voice lines after she gets released, you will know that normally she is very polite when talking to people or the traveler. However, she tends to get quite a bit bo more bossy when talking to Toma because she is still kind of treating her, uh, treating him like a servant. The other thing to note, the other two more important things to note. One is that Toma's Q is rumored to be similar to Deluxe, where she was he was summoning a sort of a pyro thing that kind of moves forward. So similar to Ayaka's as well. And for him, lore-wise, he might not be native to Inazuma. During the Chinese livestream, I don't know if they translated this in English one as well, but they did mention that he is the only blonde person so far in Inazuma. I mean, apart from Goro, because Goro is part animal, so that blonde makes sense. However, um, Toma is the only blonde person in Inazuma so far, so it might not mean he is not he might not be native to Inazuma. Because I mean we haven't really seen anyone dyeing their hair in Genshin yet. So that is all the stuff we have regarding the six new Inazuma characters, all of whom will very likely become playable in the future. Now of course I skipped these three for two in Harbingers at my show up, so I'll quickly mention them again. So there is Scaramouch, whose English name is the Skimisher, number six of the for two in Harbingers. He is supposed to be rumored to be an electro catalyst user, however that was way back in 1.1, so that might be subject to change. The second one is of course La Senora again, who is the fair lady in English name, and she is supposed to be either a cryo callus user or a callus user, depending on if they can cryo as her delusion or vision. Because recently I've seen that the Genshin fandom changed her uh, cryo to her vision, which was back then her cryo was put as her delusion. And of course, the last one is the doctor or uh, the doctor or the professor. I don't know how to pronounce his English name. His face is here. He's also going to be showing up as one of the Fatui Harbingers. Most of you might not know him, but he has appeared for quite a bit lore-wise. He is the most cold-blooded of the Fatui Harbingers. He normally experiments on kids as well as human subjects, and he is also known to have done many 
inhumane stuff, including turning his formal servant into a ruin guard like creature and a bunch of stuff like that. So he is going to be very interesting to see him come into play in terms of Inazuma and what, uh, what he is capable of. Weapon wise we don't know anything about him and element wise we don't know anything about him. However we do know that he is native to Sumeru. That is all the information I have for you today. If you like the content please consider subscribing. Thank you and have a nice day.